Thank you for coming to Story Hour with Book and Puppet Company. My name is Andy. Today we're reading Adrift at Sea, a Vietnamese boy's story of survival by Marsha Fortrick Skripuch with Quan Ho, art by Brian Danes. Now, if somebody is mean to you and your family, you might need to really run away and just get away from those mean people. And this is a story about somebody who did it. And here we go. Here's the kid who did it. That was when he was a kid. And this is his family. And here he is now as a grown up. But this is a story about when he was a kid. There's a dolphin in this book here. When I come home from school today, a jug of water and bags of dried food sit by the door. Ma gathers me into her arms. Are you leaving me now too? I asked. A year ago, Ba had left with my older sister, Lynn. Now there are just me and my sisters, Lan, Lon, and Van. We live with our aunts, uncles, and cousins in Ho Chi Minh City. I am leaving, says Ma, but you are coming with me. When? Tonight. She holds a finger to her lips. Can you hold a finger to your lips? The neighbors cannot know. They have to sneak away even without letting their neighbors know? That night, I toss in bed. What will my future be? I hold Ba's cap to my face. The scent reminds me of his last words. Be brave, Tuan. Ma touches my shoulder, and I jolt awake. You want to jolt awake? Let's, let's be asleep, and then we'll jolt awake. Did you do it? Okay, close your eyes, and jolt. <sighs> I dress in layers and tiptoe down the stairs. Lan and Lan and Ma are there. Aunt Ngia wants to wait with two of her children, but not little Tao. Aunt Bang and Uncle Hai are not there, nor are their children. Uncle Tree is not there either. Then it hits me. Where's my sister Vaughn? She's too young to travel, says Ma. I almost cry out. Our family is to be broken yet again. The look on Ma's face silences me. Only some of them can go right now. They have to go separately. We slip outside. A truck pulls up. You want to make the sound of the truck? It's very late at night. We climb in and hold on to each other as it careens over bumps and potholes. You want to make that sound? Get out before they catch me, says the driver. We hide among bushes close to the water until skiffs appear. Now, says Ma, a skiff is a kind of boat. Now, says Ma, I jump over rocks and bushes, running to the boats. Guns fire! Oh no, there go the guns. You want to make the sound of the guns? Bang! 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 See, there's like the soldiers and they're shooting a bullet at him. They should not do it. One bullet pierces a clump of dirt by my foot. Whoa, this bullet came really close. I stumble and roll head over heels. I get up and keep running. Soldiers shout. My heart pounds. Oh, here, let's make his heart pound. Boom, 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 boom. Can you make your heart pound? Boom, 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 boom. Did you ever have to run like that so fast? I never did. With bullets coming after? This is really bad. This book is bad. Look, he has to go. And there go the bangs. Bang, bang, bang. This is extremely bad. Stuff like this only happens like in TV or like a video game. It shouldn't really happen. This is really wrong. This page is really bad. I don't even want to look at that page. Lawn scrabbles onto a skiff, pulling me in. Strangers crawl in beside us. Where are Ma and Lan, my cousins, aunt? The boatman pushes off. Help me, it's Ma. 
clutching onto the side, knee-deep in water. We pull her in. They all had to go to this, this skiff, which is a kind of a boat, because they're escaping from those bad soldiers who were shooting guns at them. Bullets fly past our head. Oh, you want to do some more bangs? Bang, bang, bang. Bang, 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 bang. This is bad. We duck. The motor kicks over and we speed away. There goes the boat. You want to make the sound of the motorboat? I'm glad they're getting away. When the gunshots subside, I realize the horrible truth. The rest of my family is lost. We travel in terrified silence. They probably went back to the house. Or maybe they're on a different boat. The sea is empty for long minutes, but now a large fishing boat appears. They lower a plank. I walk across, looking down into the moonlit inky sea, numb with sorrow. Another skiff. Lun! Aunt Nia beside her. Cousins, too. Our family is found! Glad they got onto another skiff. After they board, another skiff appears, and I count heads as these people walk the plank to our larger boat. We are 60! That's a lot of people on one boat. The captain starts the motor, and we speed away. Okay, let's make the motor again. <laughs> It's hard to find a place to sit. But finally we huddle together, clutching hands and falling asleep to the lullaby of slapping waves and the growl of the motor. <laughs> Next morning the sun burns down onto my face and my throat is like paper. What I would love is a tall, cool glass of milk. But I know that's not possible. Ma, can I have some water? Do you want to say, Ma, can I have some water? Ma, can I have some water? She pours a trickle into the cap of the jug and hands it to me. I gulp it down. Do you want some of this water? Here's your water. Did you get your water? Bing! I gulp it down. You want to drink your water? Let's drink your water. Oh, Dahlia is here. Dahlia, in case you didn't know what happened, did you see any of this book so far, or did you just get here? Go ahead. You just got here, right? Yeah, I just got it. Well, we're reading a book called Adrift at Sea, a, Vietnam a Vietnamese boy's story of survival. And so far in this book, some very, very dangerous and scary things have happened, such as this boy was running away because there were mean soldiers. And he and his mom and his cousins and aunt went in a truck at night. And then they were running to the boat and the soldiers were shooting bullets at them. See, the guns were shooting... And they got into the boat, and the soldiers were still shooting at them, but they got away. And at first they thought that their cousins and their aunts didn't make it, but they did. And then they're all in a boat together, and now it's the next morning, and it's very, very hot. It's so hot, and all he wants is a tall glass of milk, but his mother only has this much water, and she just gave him one cap. And he said, we just said... Ma, can I have some water? Did you want to say it again? Ma, can I have some water? She pours a trickle into the cap of the jug and hands it to me. This is all the water we got. Did you want? Oh, you can have some extra water. Bing! Here's some extra water. Bing! I'll have some too. I gulp it down. More! Please! This trip lasts four days, she says. This is all the water we have. Look, everybody else wants some water, too. He only gets that much water. 
This book is extremely bad, by the way. So far, a lot of really bad things have been happening. I take off one of my shirts and put it over my head to block out the sun. I drift in and out of sleep, thinking of water, dreaming of milk. My lips crack and my skin peels. This would be really bad. I wish it didn't happen. It is happening, though. It is a true story about something that really happened to some kid. On the second day, our boat springs a leak. Leak? Do you know what that means? I don't know. It's like a hole in the bottom of the boat. I wish I could drink the water that laps around my feet, but it's full of salt. Because the ocean has salt water. You can't drink the ocean. Ma and Nia take turns bailing. It's hard work and few offer to help. Don't they realize our boat could sink? The captain gives them a bottle of water in thanks. We hide this treasure in our bags. There's so much water coming into their boat that they have to work hard to get the water out. Oh, on the third day I wake to a sudden silence. The motor growls no more. We're all going to die, says one man. Others cry out in panic. The captain mutters under his breath as he tries to fix the motor, but it's no use. We are adrift. Here's a picture of the whole big ocean, and here's a picture of the boat, and there's all the 60 people who are on the boat, and the motor is broken. They are just drifting in the sea. That's why this book is called that name, Adrift at Sea. Because they're just drifting. So, okay, here goes the boat. There's no motor. They don't have any sail. That's why that man said, we're all going to die. Because they don't have a motor, so they can't make their boat go. And they don't have a sail, and so they're just like in the sea, just in the sea. Do you think they're ever going to get away from there? I mean, it seems like this is the end of the book. No, it is not. Let me just check. Well, there are some extra pages over here, so I guess that more stuff happens. I don't see how more stuff can happen because they're stuck. All right. You want to turn the page? Let's just see if anything else happens. Okay. Beep. On the fifth day, I spy a boat drifting like we are. That night as I sleep, that other boat is suddenly bright with fire. I wake up to the commotion on our boat. They think we're a rescue ship, says the captain. They've lit a fire to get our attention. The flames in the distance suddenly envelop that boat. It overturns. The flames and boat are swallowed by the sea. We sixty stare in silent horror, but there is nothing that we can do to help. Will this be our fate as well? When I close my eyes, I see that burning boat. I cannot sleep. I go to help Ma bail water. As she empties her pail over the side, she gasps. I stand on my tiptoes to look. Just below the surface are many... Do you know what these are? Did you ever see one of these? Dolphins. It's a sign, Tuan, Ma says. Her words confuse me, but I am comforted too. These dolphins look nice. Can the dolphins help? 
on day six, I see something in the distance that seems too big to be a ship. It looks like a bright white light. As it gets closer, the captain cries out, It's American! An aircraft carrier! Help us! I whisper. My throat is too, do too dry to cry out. Can you say help us? Help us! Do you want to say it? Help us! Do you? This, this is like a, a, a Navy boat from the United States. Do you think that they will help? Can this big, big boat help? The massive ship looms above our tiny boat. The American sailors wave. You want to wave? The American sailors wave. When we are close enough, we see their smiles. Do you want to smile? A sailor tethers us. They lower a rope ladder. We climb up one after another when it is my turn. I am afraid I will be too weak to hold on to the ropes, but... I can't give up now. I climb. A sailor lifts me off from the topmost rung and sets me on the deck. He smiles and talks, but I don't understand. He gives me a tall glass filled with milk. I gulp it down. Do you want to drink your milk? Here, you can have some milk. Here's some milk for you. Did you get your milk? Here's some milk. You want to drink the milk? The cold wetness soothes my parched tongue and throat. I hold up my glass, hoping for more. The sailor beams. He gives me another. Oh, have some more. And another. I smile. We are safe. They were saved by the nice sailor and the ship. Thank goodness. And here's some pictures from when it happened. There they are in their boat. And here they are. Let's see. Tuan's father Nam with his older sister Lin at the Malaysian refugee camp 1980. That's how they got away. And here he is now, Tuan and his family today. Emily, Ide, Tuan, and Madeline. And that is the whole story of Adrift at Sea, a Vietnamese boy's story of survival. I'm really glad, glad he got that milk finally. And that's going to be our story hour, so thanks so much for coming. See you next time. Bye.